Hello, and welcome to our webinar on inherited retinal diseases. This webinar will provide an in-depth explanation on the genetic underpinnings of retinal diseases and highlight the influence of gene therapy, specifically the recently approved Luxturna in treating these conditions. Before we dive into this topic, we'd like to introduce ourselves and why we created this webinar. This webinar was created by the University of Toronto Medical Genomics students, Sierra Barnes, Safa Ansar, and myself, Sierra Scottolero, with the aim of providing a resource to patients and families to learn about the genetic background of retinal diseases and exciting breakthroughs in gene therapy that could have extraordinary outcomes for patients battling these diseases. Should you have any questions throughout the course of this webinar, please do not hesitate to contact us. To test your prior knowledge on genetic diseases, click the link in our video bio to complete a quick quiz. Make sure to pause the video until you're finished. There will also be a post video quiz to review the content of this webinar. Let us begin by introducing you to Jared, an eight-year-old patient who has recently been diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, an inherited retinal disease. Throughout the course of this webinar, with the help of Jared, we will walk you through the biology of the eye, the symptomology of retinitis pigmentosa, the diagnostic testing, as well as the genetic underpinnings of this disease. We will also provide an introduction to gene therapy, an overview of the Luxturna gene therapy for use in retinitis pigmentosa, and cover its mechanisms of action, how this therapy was brought to market, and its cost and coverage. As previously mentioned, Jared has been diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, or RP for short, which affects approximately one in 5,000 people worldwide. RP is categorized as a group of inherited eye diseases that affects the retina, or the light-sensitive area of the eye. Specifically, RP causes the breakdown of photoreceptor cells. These cells are in the retina and are what let us be able to detect and process light, helping us to see. As these cells break down, patients like Jared begin to experience progressive vision loss, meaning their vision gets worse over time. Although RP is classified as a rare disease, it's one of the most common inherited diseases of the retina. Before we move any further, let's take a closer look at the makeup of our eyes. The structure and functions of our eyes are incredibly complex. Each eye is constantly adjusting the amount of light that it lets in, focuses on objects near and far, and produces continuous images for our brains to interpret. If we look at Jared's eyes, we can see that light enters the eyes through the cornea, the clear curved layer that protects the front of the eye and helps to focus in light on the retina, which is at the back of the eye. After passing through the cornea, light travels through the pupil, the black dot in the middle of the eye. The circular colored area of Jared's eye, the iris, controls the amount of light that can enter the eye by enlarging or dilating to allow more light in, or it can shrink to let less light in when Jared is in a really bright environment. Directly behind Jared's iris is the lens, which can change shape and focus on the retina. All the way in the back of the eye is an area called the retina. This area contains the light-sensing photoreceptor cells that send electrical signals to our brains to process what we are looking at and to create the images that we see. There are two main types of photoreceptors found in the retina, cones and rods, and these cells begin to break down in RP patients like Jared, ultimately affecting their vision. Let's zoom in and explore these cells a little bit closer. Cones are responsible for our central and color vision, whereas rods are responsible for our night and peripheral vision. Most forms of RP, similar to Jared's diagnosis, first cause the breakdown of rod cells. This means Jared has started to experience something known as night blindness, where his eyes have a very difficult time detecting dim light since the rod cells in his retina are beginning to break down. Night blindness is somewhat like the experience normally sighted individuals encounter when entering a dark movie theater on a bright sunny day. However, Jared and many other RP patients cannot adjust well to dark and dimly lit environments, making it incredibly difficult for them to see. As RP progresses and more rod cells break down, patients begin to lose their peripheral vision and experience what is known as tunnel vision where there will be a ring of vision loss within their periphery that slowly starts to increase. Some patients are able to retain a small degree of totally clear central vision that they can carry throughout their life. But since RP is slowly progressive, 
that visual fields can continue to shrink over time. On the opposite end of Jared's symptoms, other forms of RP can first affect a patient's cone photoreceptor cells. This group of patients first slowly lose their central vision, which unfortunately cannot be corrected. The loss of cone cells also leads to disturbances in color detection, and as this form of RP progresses, our other photoreceptor cells, the rod cells, also begin to degenerate and cause night blindness and peripheral vision loss. So how was Jared diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa? Jared's parents noticed he was having a really tough time moving around at night as he was always bumping into things. He couldn't tie his shoelaces because he had trouble seeing his shoes and couldn't pick his toys up off the floor because he couldn't see them. On cloudy days, he found it difficult to walk to the bus stop and was never able to enjoy sitting outside at night with his family counting stars. Jared's parents brought him to the doctor where his symptoms were recognized immediately as retinitis pigmentosa. Diagnosis of RP usually begins in children, adolescents, and young adults with progression of the disease continuing throughout a young patient's life. The pattern and degree of vision loss that a patient can experience is variable meaning not all patients will experience the same symptoms as Jared. Three common tests are used to confirm a diagnosis. An electroretinogram, or ERG test, which evaluates the function of a patient's rod and cone cells. An OCT test, which involves taking a picture of the retina and looking for dark streaks of pigment. And finally, a visual field test is done to determine the extent of a patient's vision loss by creating a map of their visual field. So what causes retinitis pigmentosa? Many disorders are caused by mutations in genes, which are basic units of hereditary information that are made up of DNA. Genes contain instructions to create proteins, which are the building blocks for everything in your body. Genes carry the information that determines your traits. Typically, every person has two copies of a gene, one from each parent. Mistakes or mutations within these genes can lead to disease. Several different gene mutations can lead to the progressive degeneration of rod and cone cells, leading to retinitis pigmentosa. As we mentioned previously, not all patients will experience the same pattern of vision loss as Jared. And this could be due to the idea that the gene or genes affected within a patient have an influence on the disease type and symptoms they might experience. In most cases, RP follows a recessive inheritance pattern, meaning that two copies of a disease gene must be inherited, one from each parent, in order to cause the disease. Researchers have discovered over 100 genes that can contain mutations leading to retinitis pigmentosa. One of these genes is the RPE65 gene. This gene encodes the instructions for the RPE65 protein, which plays an important role in the functioning of photoreceptors. If both copies of the RPE65 gene are mutated, the RPE65 protein is not made or doesn't function properly, leading to the degeneration of photoreceptors. Mutations in this gene account for approximately 5% of autosomal recessive childhood RP. Unfortunately, there is no known cure for retinitis pigmentosa. However, there are few treatment options focusing on managing symptoms such as light avoidance and the use of low vision aids to slow down the progression of RP. Vitamin A supplements are also seen as possible treatment options to slow down the progression of RP in patients. Current research is being conducted in areas such as transplantation, retinal prosthesis, and importantly, gene therapy. Excitingly, Luxturna is the world's first approved gene therapy for an eye disease and has recently been approved in 2020 for use by Health Canada for Canadians diagnosed with previously untreatable inherited retinal diseases caused by two mutated copies of RPE65. This is the first pharmacological treatment option available targeting the underlying disease mechanism of inherited retinal diseases. So what is gene therapy? Gene therapy is a technique that uses genes to treat or prevent disease. There are several different ways gene therapies can work, such as replacing a mutated gene in a person with a healthy copy, turning off a gene that isn't functioning properly, or introducing a new gene to help a person fight their disease. 
The transfer of genetic material then changes how a protein or a group of proteins are produced by a cell. Put simply, gene therapy works by changing the genetic information of a group of cells in a way that alleviates or combats the cause or symptoms of a disease. This means that gene therapies have the capability to halt diseases in their tracks or reverse their progress, rather than simply managing symptoms. Inherited retinal diseases are great candidates for gene therapy treatments. Compared to other organs of the body, the eye is small and easy to access for treatment administration. Luxturna is a gene therapy designed to treat inherited retinal diseases caused by genetic mutations in the RPE65 gene by providing a working gene to act in place of the mutated gene. This working gene has the potential to make the eyes function properly again and restore vision in patients like Jared. Luxterna consists of a piece of DNA containing a working copy of the RPE65 gene that is packaged inside a transporter vehicle called a vector. This vector is made from a modified, inactivated virus. The virus can't make you sick because any disease-causing viral materials have been removed. The vector is specially designed to deliver the healthy gene to the retinal pigment epithelium cells, or RPE cells for short. This gene therapy is injected once per eye by a surgeon right behind the retina. The Luxterna vector then enters the RPE cells and delivers the working copy of the RPE65 gene. These cells then begin producing the RPE65 protein. This improves the function of the photoreceptors and vision can be improved. A team of experts, including retina specialists, nurses, and genetic counselors are involved in the administration of this treatment. This gene therapy only needs to be injected one time and eliminates the need for recurrent interventions. In order to qualify for this treatment, patients with retinitis pigmentosa like Jared or individuals with other inherited retinal diseases must undergo genetic testing to confirm whether or not mutations in the RPE65 gene is the cause of their disease. Since there are hundreds of retinal disease genes, it is important to know the gene mutation to determine treatment eligibility. If RPE65 is the gene causing Jared's retinitis pigmentosa, he is a great candidate for Luxterna gene therapy. But how do Jared's parents know that this treatment is safe for Jared, and more importantly, that it actually works? When drugs like Luxterna are approved for clinical use, they have to go through a rigorous set of clinical trials that test the drug for safety and efficacy. The journey to Luxterna being approved by the FDA in 2017 and Health Canada in 2020 spanned over 20 years and followed multiple individuals on a long-term basis to assess drug side effects and to test its effectiveness over time. After all the incredible research done on the RPE65 gene and its role in causing RP, a groundbreaking study in 2001 tested an early version of this gene therapy in a naturally occurring canine model of RP, where dogs have the same RPE65 gene in activation as humans and suffer from early and severe visual impairment. After injecting the drug into their eye, scientists found that not only did the drug have no toxic side effects, but the dog's retinal cells stopped breaking down and their visual field function was greatly improved. This showed researchers that their method of injecting an inactivated virus containing a functional copy of the RPE65 gene was in fact a safe and efficient way to introduce this necessary biological component into the eyes of animals and eventually people that couldn't make their own RPE65 protein. This proof of concept study poised Luxterna for human clinical trials and after making the necessary modifications to translate this drug to a human system, the first ever human clinical trial for Luxterna began in 2007. This was a phase one clinical trial, meaning that the safety was the primary outcome for the 11 patients enrolled. These patients received an increasingly higher dose of the drug to find the optimal dosage that resulted in the biggest change to their vision with zero toxicity. This trial was massively successful and patients' vision was so greatly improved that the researchers moved straight into the phase three clinical trial, where 21 patients aged four to 44 received injections of the drug at a set dosage in both eyes. All patients in these trials reported a massive improvement to their light sensitivity, 
navigational ability, and visual field. It's important to note, however, that their visual acuity, or the sharpness of the images they saw, did not significantly change. But this did not stop the patients from navigating a winding maze under low light conditions, something that they were unable to accomplish before the treatment. In fact, the drug was so effective that patients in the original phase one trial were called back to have their second eye injected. And one year into the phase three trial, the 10 participants that received a placebo drug as an experimental control were offered the real thing, which is a huge deal because at this point, scientists have to be very sure of a drug's effectiveness to do this. Data from these studies suggested that the drug's effect was maximal around the 30-day mark after injection, and the beneficial effects of the drug were present even after four years, with observations still ongoing. Because of Jared's genetic test results and the visual improvement reported in RP patients treated with Luxterna, Jared and his parents are considering Luxterna as a promising therapy for his RP. Their next question is, how will they gain access to this life-changing drug? While the genetic testing to gain access to Luxterna is covered by Canadian public health plans, Luxterna, as one of the first gene therapies on the market, comes with a pretty hefty price tag of $425,000 for the one-time injection of a single eye. That's $850,000 for both eyes. This definitely represents a serious barrier to access the therapy, and insurance plans in the US and Canada are rapidly adapting to this new kind of healthcare. Moreover, Spark Therapeutics put out an official guide to help patients and their families navigate a variety of insurance situations from private to government funded plans. Excitingly, for anyone who lives in British Columbia, the drug is now under review for government funded treatment coverage. So what does the future hold for Luxterna? While its cost remains a significant barrier to access, this is just the beginning of the gene therapy revolution. We are already seeing insurance and government health policies adapt to this new therapeutic landscape. A huge benefit of Luxterna is that it needs to be administered extremely infrequently to result in lasting effects. While there is only enough data right now to guarantee that Luxterna is effective for up to four years, patients from clinical trials are still being monitored and followed up. So we'll soon have long-term data. Some evidence points to the fact that earlier introduction of the drug is more effective at restoring vision, indicating that treatment earlier in life, especially during childhood development, would be beneficial. While 12 months old is the minimum age to receive Luxterna, as the retina is still rapidly developing during the first years of life, prenatal screening could help parents plan for future treatment. Many organizations, such as the Foundation Fighting Blindness and the Curing Retinal Blindness Foundation have advocated and fundraised heavily for this drug and are great support systems for those who have been recently diagnosed. They each also have their own success stories. Take Jake Hogan, who was the first individual to receive Luxterna after it was approved by the FDA at age 13. As an advocate for the foundation, he is clear in his interviews about how the drug has massively improved his quality of life. My vision just didn't improve right away. It gradually got better. I don't have to hold onto my friend's shoulders anymore when we go to a movie theater or go outside at night, Jake says excitingly. So while Luxerna has only been recently approved for public use, this doesn't mean that the risks and research behind this drug haven't been meticulously accounted for. As with all therapies, there may be side effects. However, Jared and his family can rest assured that should they decide to pursue this course of treatment for Jared's RP, there are many resources to help them do so and decades of science behind Luxterna that has made it the first FDA and Health Canada approved gene therapy for an eye disease. We wanted to take a minute to thank you all for following along as we introduced you to Jared and we hope this webinar has served as a great resource to help in your understanding of retinitis pigmentosa and the exciting potential of the Luxterna gene therapy for this disorder. Additionally, we have attached the links to some fantastic resources to help patients and parents further explore RP and the benefits of Luxterna. Should any questions have come up over the course of this webinar, please do not hesitate to contact us. We want to encourage you to click the link in our video bio to access a post-webinar quiz to test what you have learned over the course of this webinar.
Thanks again so much for joining us.